Uh, my name is Kevin Coates. I work for Honor Air, and uh, I'm an electrical engineer there doing avionics. I don't know. <laughs> what else to say about that? I've been speaking at PCB West for about 10 years now. Yeah, so, you know, heat management is all about spreading out the heat. If you have a lot of heat in a tiny area, even 100 milliwatts of heat can be way, way too much. But if you spread out that heat, 100 watts of heat over maybe 200 square inches is not that big a deal. So it's all about spreading out the heat. That's really what heat management is. So if you talk about processors, uh, you're talking about heat sinking of some sort, and you have to figure out on that processor where the heat is coming from. Most processors will require some sort of thermal interface material on top of the chip, and then you're gonna to wanna to put some sort of heat sink. Hopefully you don't have to have a fan. I don't like fans in general because they can fail and they bring in a lot of dust. So it's best if you can try to design it without a fan, uh, but it depends on the processor. Some processors, although it's very rare, actually put their heat through the bottom where the BGA balls come up and you can actually heat sink the bottom of the chip and it's more effective than heat sinking the top. So that's unusual. Now MOSFETs in general are gonna be higher power things. So you're gonna to want to solder on some heat sink there. My favorite is to use the heat sinks that solder on around the MOSFET to get the, the heat out through the copper that the MOSFET is soldered onto. And then that uh, heat sink rises up above the board and then gives a much bigger surface area to cool that. And really LEDs are kind of the same, uh, especially if you can use like two ounce copper or the really thick copper to spread the heat out as much as you can. So I like to select the materials that I have already and that are free. <laughs> so. The ones that I select, you know, as I mentioned, uh, two ounce copper is a great example. If you can design your board with two ounce copper, then you can possibly make your, your board to spread out that heat without any additional material. Now, on the other hand, if you have something like uh, a MOSFET that puts out 50 watts of heat, you're obviously going to need a lot more than that. So it really depends on the heat level you're trying to dissipate. <laughs> Sure, so as I mentioned, heat management is really about spreading out the heat as wide as possible. So, uh, so one way of doing it is putting the, the heat dissipating things in the middle of the board, or actually really spreading them out across the board is probably even better. It depends on if there's one or many components that put out a lot of heat. So for example, a mistake that I made in the past was I put MOSFETs in the corner of the board and that really limited how much area I had to spread out that heat. So I would avoid putting them around the edges, unless of course you're trying to get to a heat sink on the edge of the board. So heat sinks, there are you know hundreds, thousands of different kinds of heat sinks. So it's kind of a hard question to answer, but uh, as I mentioned before, one thing that I like to use on MOSFETs, you know, especially, well, first of all, I like to choose the larger packages because the really tiny MOSFETs are rated for a nice size, you know, they're rated for good um, low resistance and good power, but they're so small, they don't, they don't spread out the heat very much. So I try to choose a larger package, maybe a five by five or even a TO220 kind of tab MOSFET if I can, depending on the power level. But around that, if I'm choosing like a 5x5 five five MOSFET, I like to use the, the copper as thick as possible to spread it out. And then you can solder on the heat sinks around the MOSFET and then get that heat out. And then you can put thermal vias on the side as well to get it to the other side. You can even have a heat sink on that side as well. So it's all about spreading the heat out as much as you can. So high power really runs two problems. One of them is heat, obviously. Uh, heat is gonna be something you're gonna have to manage with a heat sink or something like that. The other problem is radiated emissions. 
that could be a problem in a lot of different ways, depending on the frequency involved. But uh, one thing you can do is to manage the return paths. So as the current flows out of your high power device, make sure that you have a return path to something close by so that you don't have a big giant loop area for that high power device, because otherwise your radiated emissions could be causing a lot of noise in nearby circuitry. Well, because I want them to. <laughs> the other part is, if you know about heat management, if you work with any kind of heat, and when I say heat, I'm talking about things that put out maybe two watts or more of heat, uh, you really need to know some things about spreading that heat out, how to do it with copper, how to do it with free things that you can do on the board. And the other part of it is signal integrity. You really have to understand that just to do really almost anything these days. Understanding both of those things is going to make you a more, I guess I would say, a better designer, but also you're going to be a more valuable designer to your company. So it's really great for your career. I talked to two major companies in the last month, and they both desperately needed a signal integrity guy. So I was, I was thinking, you know, a lot of people don't know about this stuff, so it's, it's very important to know it. And if you do know it, you can be extremely valuable. <laughs>